Welcome Survivor! Another week has gone by and the Alpha 18.1 patch is out! No wait, wait, I, I thought we were supposed to be in Alpha Alpha 18.2. Hold on, let's see, Alpha 18 patch... Okay, it looks like the fun pimps have forgotten to... put the fact that the Alpha 18.2 patch is actually out into stable, so... Let's have a look at the forum instead where they actually do update all these things a lot better. So today I'm going to walk through some of these pieces of Alpha 18.2 patch notes for 7 days to die and what things to do, what not to do and what really to avoid and obviously we see a big warning here. Really important. So do follow along and I will leave the link to these patch notes in description in case I gloss over some items that you're curious to look at in more detail. And a small reminder, as a small YouTuber channel, it really does help me if you subscribe to my channel. You don't have to like it, you don't have to comment, but if you subscribe, that really does help me. And ring that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. I also have my Discord with the link up in the top right, I believe, on my channel, and as well a Twitter. You can always follow me there to get news of uh, what I'm doing and interact with me. But let's uh, dive into these uh, Alpha 18.2, I don't know why it says B5, if it's a stable one. Either way, it's a stable one. So first thing to really keep in mind, and this is critical, and it's uh, one thing that uh, people are laughing at uh, on Reddit, because it's, it's, it's fairly peculiar. They're releasing a stable patch that has a critical bug in it. So warning, do not overload your forge more than 30K by smelting in new resources while queuing up recipes and canceling them. This will likely result in a chunk reset and part of your base will be gone. A fix will be deployed to experimental soon. So this is critical and people have already been caught out by this one. If uh, you have your forge in your base, which most people do, and you do this, you might lose a big part of your base. So I would consider this a critical, critical issue. And I don't know what the actual release is stable when they have a critical game bug in there. But anyway, really take note. Of course, it means that, and I'm on the Vedite community multiplayer server here. I do have someone else on, but uh, make sure these ones should not be in more than 30,000. Keep them below. So I think that generally happens when you smelt in new things and then you, you queue something up. Let's say I do tip here. Uh, maybe not tip, but let me do some forged iron. And uh, let's do this. And I queue all this up. And then I smelt in enough that I have, let's say, 20,000 smelted in. And then I cancel this one. Then I end up with 20,000 plus 18,000, which is obviously more than 30,000. And bye-bye chunk. Bye-bye base. No, leave my base alone. And obviously it means I would lose all my stuff. I would have a nice big hole here in the middle of my base. So don't do that. Really, really quick critical. Let's look at the, some of the things that they added. Of course, they do mention they had fixes for users running AMD cards and the option for terrain quality. So we'll give you more FPS, which is always good. An important thing that people might not quite catch what it means is this is create a function to lock XP amount required to specific mount at a certain level. Very cryptic. What I think this means is that uh, in some of the previous versions you had, uh, if you gain the level, let's, let's say you're level 150, you might have needed something like 50 million experience in order to actually gain a level. And obviously that means you're going to have to murder, you know, something like 100 million uh, zombies. Well, not quite, but quite a lot of zombies in order to do that. I think uh, if each zombie gives uh, 500 experience, well, you can imagine killing, uh, you know, 100,000 zombies is going to take a while just to gain one level. So what they did, uh, they've created functions so they can lock the experience amount so they can say, hey, you know, how, level 150 is going to require 50,000 experience and not 50 million, for instance, or whatever it is. Secondly, spears should drop to the ground when a player corpse despawns. Uh, I guess this is when you actually kill another player. I don't play PvP, so I'm not really sure where this would happen unless you're playing around with your friends and killing them, but don't kill your friends because then uh, previously you could lose your spear, but now you'll get it back. Very good, you can kill another friend. Perfect. Several deco blocks to metal fence and furniture blocks. And what this means is that if you have these shape menus, the metal fences and railings and the metal furniture, you now will have more shapes. I don't know if they added any here, maybe they did. Mm, don't know. Uh, for this one, I think they were, they're still expanding. You have the shelves, you have the lockers and everything, and hopefully they'll keep on adding even more. 
hopefully eventually we'll get to where we can put down our bathtub we can put down our uh, treadmill or whatever it is or a wood burning stove or a satellite dish oops that vanishes sometimes yeah that still vanishes and hopefully that's something we will see uh, maybe in alpha 18.3 alpha 18.4 soon fump him soon Command alias is for food hungry stuff. I guess that's when you're triggering various commands and you only do that as an admin, so most players don't care. Zombie dogs now appear in the burnt forest. Ooh, that's gonna be scary. Previously, if you were in desert, you would have the vultures. If you were in the wasteland, you would have the dogs and the vultures and the zombie bears. And burnt forest, you would have the zombie, zombie bears and you would have the vultures. But now apparently you get the zombie dogs as well very nice ah so fun to have more zombie dogs to kill you as you start out so uh don't stay in the burnt forest if you're early game uh, get out of there terrain quality video option let's have a look at that okay i'm now in the game and there is a terrain quality here you can change it while in game hmm quality and distance of the terrain that's really interesting it's uh, sort of like whoa that was weird it's i guess sort of where right now we have the tree quality which uh, determines how good the quality is of the tree. And uh, it will allow us, oh, that one we can change. So if I do, for instance, lowest, apply, you look at that tree. Not a huge difference though. Interesting. Oh yeah, these ones are definitely not as good, I think. And if I changed it back, Oh yeah, now the trees are definitely looking nice. So they allow you to do that for the terrain as well. So that means that you can definitely save some FPS, but you can't actually change this while in the game. So you would have to exit the game or rather exit the save, change it, go back to see how it looks and how the FPS is and so forth. But it can definitely help on systems that are having FPS issues. Now let's have a look at some of the things that have changed, which there are quite a lot of them. They've increased the value cost of the Grandpa's Learning Elixir. That's all right. Reduced stack size of some Ammo Quest awards. And I think this was really important. People were highlighting before that if you had, it was one of the perks that gave you extra extra awards and you could literally get a whole stack of, uh, of grenades or something as a reward. Let's say you get a stack of uh, 25 contact grenades and that was a little bit overpowered or a stack of 150 armor piercing bullets or something. That was way too much. I think they've really balanced that a little bit, which I think was needed. They made some uh, changes here for the, the different mods. So the Tubic Standard Magazine has no random range. This is the one that gives you additional uh, shotgun shells in the shotgun. The Rod and Spring reduced to 15%. I think it was 20 to 25%. So that's uh, maybe just slowing it down just slightly. Stun effects from shotguns do not cause a cooldown on target, which means that I guess cops will no longer get a cooldown so they can vomit immediately. This is a big one. Shotgun slugs count as AP rounds. And this is really a big thing. So Arlene and Darlene here have uh, volunteered. Twits, thank you very much. They have volunteered here to uh, allow me to show what this means. So are you using a normal round? And this is the normal shotgun shell. Does this damage, blah, blah. It has extra, blah, it will target armored satellites. So I shoot, bam. Uh, why did both die? All right, let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's shoot here. Let's make sure I only hit this one. Okay, that didn't quite go the way I was intending it. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit confusing. If we look at the Magnum Ammo, this is the regular round. It basically just has the range damage and the block damage. If we look at the armor piercing, it says target penetration one, which means it goes through one and will hit the one behind. Now, if we look at the shotgun shell, it doesn't say that at all. It says nothing. If we look at the AP slug, it says target penetration two, which means that it will go through two before it loses its effectiveness, which means it will hit three targets. So in a nutshell, I have uh, three here. If I shoot, it should hit all three of them. And it does. If I use uh, just a regular slug or regular shotgun ammo, I mean, regular shell, it has three here. It should only hit the first two. It hits all three. Okay, so there's something really weird about this. I think it's supposed to be this one hits the first one. This one can go through two to hit three uh, in total, but uh, that's not how it works. So something is wrong with armor piercing. Fun pimps, have a look. This is this is really weird. Anyway, this is making my video seem totally crazy. But let's forget about this. You can stay alive. Let's move on from the shotgun slugs counters AP runs because that was really weird. Anyway. Increased lock pick break chance by 10%, which means that they're going to break a lot more often unless you have perked into it. I think this is a good change. Increased stack size for bullet tips. 
casings, buckshots and paper. This is really nice because we had that issue continually. It's always something that people talk about. What's the perfect stack size for all these different items? I think they were a little bit too low, especially because it means that you end up having so many different stacks instead of just a couple of stacks for these items. Shotguns now cost a short stun by default, and I think that's really good. They should be. I wish they had that on the shotgun turret as well. Further balancing of the shotgun is they've increased the spread and the damage at short range and they've lowered the max range to 10 meters, I think. We'll have to try that out, but I think it means that shotgun is good at short range, long range, use this shotgun slug. Bow rebalancing, increase the damage on the primitive bow, really good. There is an issue I think right now with the bows and crossbows. You do have the progression from primitive to wooden to compound. The problem is that then you also have the, the stone arrow uh, iron arrow and the steel arrow and by the time you get to the compound bow or crossbow compound crossbow compound crossbow and you get the steel arrows or steel bolts you already could have probably marksman rifle with a lot of ammo and then you don't really need to use the bows anymore they need to work on that progression because a marksman rifle or even hunting rifle does twice as much damage uh, at the top level and why would you ever use a bow then They've also increased the drop rate for some of these parts that uh, you use to craft things. Um, I'm not really sure this is really needed to be honest, because how often do you craft a pistol or an SMG or even a club? You might do it early game, but then you're gonna loot and find a higher quality that you can actually craft. I got tons! And by tons, I mean a lot of different parts that I never used. Look at this, crossbow bullet parts, never used pistol handgun parts, never used machine gun, never used machete, military armor, motor tool used once to make an auger, rifle never used, rocket launcher never used, shotgun, uh, steel knuckles, sledgehammer, steel spear, whatever. I've never used them. Steel tools and the motor tools is the only ones that I've ever actually used. These are pointless because you can maximum craft Q level 5, but you'll find Q level 6. And by the time you can make Q level 5, you probably have a lot of Q level 6 things anyway, or at worst, a Q level 5. So, nah, they need to do something else for this. Here's an important one for people who are doing farms. Living off the land reduces the cost of crafting farm plots. And you can see that once you get to number 2, farm plots cost 30% less to craft. Level 3, 50% less. And this is quite a big deal because normally they cost uh, no, 10 rotting flesh and night repair is not an issue. This is not an issue. It's really the rotting flesh. But once you've perked up, you can pump them out for 5 rotting flesh, which is really useful. And remember, if you have your farm plus and you put them down and you want to move them, just shovel them up. It takes a few hits to actually get them up, but... There we go. We picked up the farm plot and then you can plant it down somewhere else. Really useful if you're moving it around. Sham recipe now creates five cans of sham at a time but requires more ingredients and acid. And this of course is where you serve rotting flesh to your friends. This is really good when you don't really like them. You know, it's like you don't want to waste your high quality meat stew. So yeah, you just cook up some rotting flesh that you found somewhere you harvested from dead zombies and a ah, little bit of animal fat, a little bit of acid to break down this rat rotting flesh and bone and mm, yummy. Nice can of sham. Oh, uh, no, maybe not. Something that I have really been enjoying myself on my server is the ES science lets you craft gunpowder, glue, aloe crap, blah, blah blah with fewer resources. And you'll see that in the game it says craft glue and aloe cream cheap, cheaper and gunpowder in efficient stacks. And you'll see that oil and gasoline. Let's see what else you have down here. Ah, uh, that's a bit it. So at least two of them really does help because, and I'll show that as well. If you go into here, let's say I want to do my gunpowder, normally I'll get one for one well, which is you know not too bad if you're doing it here if you're doing it in your normal uh, uh, fire fire campfire it's a one for one in the chemistry station is pretty good but you can make a stack of it and which means you only pay 80 percent of these ones and you end up with a stack of gunpowder and this is really really good if you wonder what i do on my server obviously is getting tons of gunpowder i was like 10 20 30 40 50 000 gunpowder which of course is needed because I have all these turrets to kill any players that come in here. Stop robbing me! Get out of here! Don't you dare! Small little addition, knives now cause bleeding on every hit. I mean, it's good. It's not a hugely big thing, but it's pretty good. And you also see that the deep cuts, the further increases the max bleeding, stacks and adds a run debuff. That's good. That might keep you alive by the bleeding the zombies. Uh, I don't know really why that would work, but I guess it does. And uh, make them run slower. 
electric parts are no longer craftable. Not that I've ever crafted it because scavengers, I, I still think we should be able to craft these ones. I, I really dislike when things cannot be crafted and we have to scavenge it because eventually you run out of them. Why? Because the whole town or the towns around you get picked clean. Cheesecake now grants 5% better price with buying. I'm going to have to buy some of these cheesecake or eat them or cook them. Uh, is there a baker around? Blood Moon Spawner ignores bedrolls. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that that was a case before. So I guess before they could spawn where you had your bedroll. I didn't know why they do this. Then maybe they should still respect it because otherwise they could spawn literally in your own base if you happen to be outside. Some fixes in here. You can ride the bike in turbo mode with no stamina. Fixed. Locket goggles used the A17 scaling are too strong compared to the perk. I guess they fixed up one. That was the case. You could actually find really good stuff really too fast. Schematic and food recipe sounds are played for everyone to hear. Oh, I like that. You go out looting with your friends, so you hear this uh, the schematic red sound, and you're like, oh, oh, are you reading and all these things? Aren't you sharing the loot? And the player would be, no, no, I didn't find anything. Don't worry, I'll, I'll share it, obviously. And of course, you know he was lying. Shoot him. So I guess you can no longer do that. I thought that was pretty good. So you could hear it and go like, hey, what did you find? Anything nice? Stop being selfish. Chainsaw and Augur not giving XP on zombie kills has been fixed. That was, an, I guess, a bit of an issue since at least Alpha 17 Chainsaw was really bad at killing zombies, but I'm going to have to try that again then. Or back here to the AMD 5000 and 6000 series render ground horribly, so now that has been fixed. So if you're using this one, you should be happy, hopefully. Players can break Blood Moon spawn, Blood Moon spawns for entire server. I don't know how that would happen, but... Uh, Player dying during the Blood Moon Hawk can stop the Blood Moon spawn. Yes, I knew this was happening. I had a long argument about this one on one of my YouTube videos where I was saying that, yes, this was happening. I die, there was no more Blood Moon spawn. And people were saying, no, you continue all the time. And I guess this is confirmed. This was a bug that has been fixed. Really good. I had that happen when I was making a video and it just, the whole horde just stopped because I died. I should be in God mode more often. The silencer no longer blocks ADS on a pistol. What? Didn't they fix this in Alpha 8, 8, 8 before? Is it an Alpha 18.2 thing? Uh, I thought they actually had fixed this one, but maybe they, it maybe broke again. And that's it. And again, reiterating, don't overload your forge, or at least put your forge away from your base because you don't want to lose your base because of a chunk reset. So do you think this was a good release? What else do you want to see for the next version? I hope you've enjoyed following along with me here as we read through these patch notes. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.